In this video, we're going to take a look at some extra tips and tricks in Google Forms. Specifically, I'm going to look at some of the more options for the fields, and we're going to take a look at the add-ons. So first of all, I have a, um, a Google Form already created in front of you. Um, so I have some sample questions. This one happens to be a, um, a summer festival sign-up for a school, looking for parents who will be attending and will be participating. So I have um, four questions. One is who's going to be at the festival with a simple yes or no. The number of um, non-elementary non age students will be there. So if they have younger siblings, will be in tenants, just so the cook can get a, a head count. Um, preferred email address. And if they can um, support any extra activities. They're going to do some um, pie eating contest and craft table and so forth in the afternoon. So when I preview the document by clicking on my little eyeball here, I can see what my form will look like. So I have some drop downs, some simple answers, and um, a yes or no. But when I look at this, this first question here, will you be in attendance? If someone answers no, they obviously won't be supporting any events after the barbecue, and they won't be bringing any pre-kindergarten age students. So half the form really doesn't, doesn't apply. So let's talk about a way we can, we can change that. So I'm going to go over here to these double bars, and I'm going to add a section. So I'll drop in my section. So now I have two different sections. Okay, And when I preview this, so I'll just say yes and go next. You can see how it jumps me to my second section. Okay. So two different parts. So first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have the right items in the right section. So um, email address, that's something I think people could can answer whether they're going to attend the barbecue or not. So I'm going to make that my first question. Put that up in my second, into my first section here. And then my second question will be, will you be in attendance at the summer festival? So if the answer is no, I don't need them to um, answer either of these two questions. So I'm going to call this section um, Attending Festival, just to give it an easy identif identifier. Okay. So now when I preview, you can see here's the place for the email, here's my yes or no, and then I can go to the next page. But still, if I answer no for attendance, it brings me to my next section, right? So we're going to change that. I'm going to go over here to this question about will you be in attendance, and I'm going to click on these dots here for the more. When I click on it, one option I have is go to section based off of answer. So again, I went to this question, three dots, go to section based on answer, and you can see here it gives me these, these other options I can add to my questions. So for yes, I'm going to have it go to the next section, or I could say go to section 2, which is about attending the festival. So yes, I will be there. It will automatically take me to this, this next set of questions. If they answer no, I'm going to have it bring me right to the submit form. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so if I click on yes, it brings me to the next set of questions. If I click on no, it brings me right to where I'd submit the form. I don't get that next set of questions. So I automatically made things easier for the people taking the form. Just by clicking here, go to sec section based off of the answer and adding my options. But I want to do a few more things with this, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is, this one's asking for an email address, right? Now anything that's not an email address for this short answer isn't going to help me. So I'm going to click on that question, click on those dots, and go to resp response validation. So again, dots, response valid validation. You can see here where it says number, there's all these different options that I can have for that box. So in this case, I'm going to go to text and email address. Okay, you can see here I could put in a custom text. So if someone puts in something other than an email address in there, 
it just give them a message whatever I put in there you know keep trying or um, check again please always say please right so now when I preview this form if I put in something that's not an address it's like nope not quite right still not quite there we go that looks like an address it has the at and a dot whatever okay so again dots response validation valid validation easy for me to say text and I selected email address keep in mind there's all these other different options you can do as well so for example for this short answer I'm gonna actually use one of those other options I'm gonna go down to my more response validation and the number of pre kindergarten age students you'll be bringing I'll definitely want to be a number okay so for my options I'm gonna say number is number so I can't put a letter in there I can't write out TWO for two um, you can see there's other options in terms of more than or less than given the different types of questions those will definitely come into play and be something that you may find helpful but not for this particular question um, you may want to take a look at those other options but for me number is number so they'll put in whether it's zero or um, 12 depending on how many siblings they have hopefully this poor person doesn't have 12 siblings before the age of kindergarten but you get the idea so now for this question I have which activity can you support now let's say I have a limited number of um, volunteers I can have for each slot like I can only have four parent volunteers for the relay race okay you know if I'm person number five signing up suddenly it's in an awkward situation for the teacher or the administrator to tell that person sorry the there's no room for you to sign up for that activity but there's a way to take care of that okay I could use an add-on so first of all let me show you how to get add-ons so at the top of my document I'm going to click on the dots for more and I'm going to go to add-ons there so add-ons are basically little mini programs that are embedded into my form that I can use to do different functions so for example this one is form notifications it says this is a sample forms add-on that allows you to set up email notifications using form submit triggers that would be really cool if I'm if that's something I want um, email notifications get Google Forms response and email message when people submit your form that could be really cool if it's something I need you can see I have these with check mark marks on them so I have certify them installed that basically makes a um, certificate for people I find that's great when I give PD and I want people to kind of fill out a form to get their own certificate or the one we're going to look at is choice eliminator what choice eliminator does is it lets me use multiple choice questions and eliminate options once things are filled so I'm going to show you how to use that specific add-on so I clicked on this question I'm gonna to go to my add-ons there's the two that I have installed for me which you know if you haven't installed anything you won't have anything listed under there you may have more if you've installed some stuff that you use but I'm going to use choice eliminator and click on configure now for this one it's going to give me this little alert that lets me know to use the drop down question type instead of multiple choice for better reliability so I um, urge you to take, take a read of that note from the author to get more but for this one I'm going to have my response on and go to the question which activity can you support and click on eliminate choices so it's going to kind of do its work in the background get everything going it may take a minute or three to get going um, once it's set I can then see that their green check mark is active and I have this little choice options so the choice options gear will let me go in and assign a number for each one of these activities so if I can only have four people for the relay race two for the egg toss I can have six for this one for that one for that we'll do eight for that and for the last question it says none but I'll be there for the barbecue 
obviously that could be a whole bunch of people. So I'm going to put 500. So up to 500 people could not volunteer to do an activity, but just be at the barbecue. Okay, so you get the general idea. I'm limiting the number of events I'm going to do. So I'll then close that out. I'm going to do a preview, see how it looks. So me at this dot org. It's happy because it's in the email form. Yes, I will absolutely be there. Um, number of people, I'm going to say zero. Ooh, can't be like that. Has to be a number. And which activity? And I will do the dunk tank and submit. So when the next person comes to do an answer, you notice here in this dunk tank is missing. That's because I said only one volunteer for that dunk tank. So it's not even an option. It takes it out of the list, which is extremely handy for people signing up. So again, I showed you how to um, use my add-ons. I showed you how to do some more for the questions. I showed you how to um, add my sections to break them up so I can have the questions advanced or not advanced to different sections. And hopefully that makes your form creation easier and the people taking your forms happier.